Hello everybody, and today I'm going to do a Necron Tactics video about the cutest model in the Codex, the Scarabs, the Canoptic Scarab. And let's face it, if you come with these as a pet, you'd have one, wouldn't you? <laughs> okay, right now, these are awesome. Okay, they've been buffed so much since the last edition. Um, they hit on freeze now, which is insane, and they wound pretty much anything on a 5 plus instead of a 6 plus. But the, their best strength is their wounds. Their 6 up armor so is basically useless. But they have so many wounds, this will make them good. Okay, and let's get into tactics, shall we? The main reason why I take these is because when I finish making my army, I fill in the rest of the spare points with scabs. Okay? And right now, because we have the index, our transports are useless. Okay, so we have no way to go across the board and get objectives. These ma the main strength with these is they are so versatile and have so many uses, and they are a threat to everything on the board. Okay? Um, well, I th the first thing I do with these, on turn 1, I do not hold objectives in my deployment zone with these. I use the mauls. But if I'm using like a 10 inch guard and I have no shooting in my army, I will daisy chain them um, across my deployment area and I'll hold as many objectives as I can, okay? I do take these max unit size of 9, but the sweet number, the number I found the most effective in most of my games is 6. 9 is just a little bit 2 point heavy, and 3, they die and give up first blood too easily. Unit of 6 is just the right amount to say, oh, I don't really want to shoot it there, it will take too much effort, I'll shoot something else. It's the mindset of the opponent you're after, not, not stats for these. 6 is good. Because he'll shoot like a unit of marines, he'll kill like, he's like, oh, well, he got three ones each. He didn't know that. That sucks. He's like, oh, do you want to spend more shooting to them? No, he doesn't. Then you just leave them. And the best part about these, right, if your opponent shoots across the board, it's like, oh, no, I've lost 13 points. Another one, another one. Oh, man, there's so many points I lost that round of shooting. And then you like, really, they're 13 points each. You might even shoot them for the rest of the game. Because I've done that a few times and it works. It's really funny. Okay, let's go into the strengths. Their strengths is they're not infantry, okay? So the gigantic things like Imperial Knights, for some reason, can't walk over these. We can walk over these. If it's, I'm pretty sure it's infantry only can walk over. So that's another really cool thing there. They're a swarm, they have three wounds, and they don't suffer from instant death anymore. So in, in the old edition, one hit, they've just wiped out. They have basically no armor server. Six plus sucks. If you can, get into cover, obviously, but it's just, I wouldn't really bother with that. Okay, and... Let's go over a few of the ways I use these. Turn one, send them at any objective you can. It really makes no difference what it is. Okay, so turn one, you move your 10 inches, you do your assault roll. You should be in the middle of the board somewhere, and a threat to anywhere else. But the main problem is if you do that, these are not a melee core unit. If you've got, only got these in your army, that's good for melee, you will lose every time, okay? Because anything can kill those in combat. Okay, they, they just, they suck in combat. The only thing you've got a good chance of killing with these is tanks. They're hitting sixes and got like three attacks. And that's what you want to send these at if you want to kill something. So what you do, tactic number one, is you have wraiths. You send up the awesome wraiths because they move faster. So on the turn one, let's use three wraiths for this example because reasons. <laughs> okay, All right, some marines there. Just moved up from his deployment area. He shot your army. It's your turn. Move up your wraiths to maximum inches, 12 inches. Maybe even charge distance, maybe not. If you are, go for it. There's no reason not to. So just say, like, if you save it to outrange, so you get your advanced move. Okay, so you advance there. You could be a rolls. So you've passed the middle of the board. You send these up, advance them, so they're that far back. Next turn, right? He. We'll not shoot the scabs because, like, why would I shoot the scabs when the wraiths are there? Wraiths are dangerous because they used to be dangerous. And people still think they are, which is awesome. Okay, so what you want to do now, right? On your next turn, because he's killed, like, a wraith. Pretend it's unit six. Just to say he killed three wraiths, okay? You send these in. You move these guys as far up as you can. Then you start daisy chaining them. The next turn, then you free to fall back of the race and go somewhere else or stay in combat and charge these in. Just make sure you keep one on the objective. 
The main goal is hold objectives. Go fetch objectives. Because you have lost all your speed. In the index, you've lost your transports, you've lost the monolith ability to teleport stuff. You have to make that fit with fast moving units. You need scarabs, you need wraiths, you need tomb blades to get the points to win. Okay. And another good thing with these, these are so damn cheap. These are throwaway units, okay? They're throwaway units. They're 13 points of base. So if you get onto an objective turn 2, turn 1 if you're extremely lucky. If you can get onto an objective turn 2 on in a building, having a 5 plus cover, that's a, that's a real big pain in your butt for your opponent to go get you off. Let's see if I get this piece of train here. So he's in the middle, like he's now post the objective there. And I was lucky enough to go in and go up to there. Right, I'm three inches from the top floor, so I have the objective. Like so, I have the objective for that guy there, and I got some up here. If you couldn't get there, it doesn't matter. So I, I say I got the objective, right? Turn two, I went up and I advanced up. I have that, but another good thing with these scabs, okay? Right, let's say the objective isn't on top, right? It's down here. I say I've lost so many, we've got like three or four left. Okay, so if I go like this, right, you can't see them from your model's point of view. Right, and as you can see, these are actually, I made it, made, made mine as a swarm, running over a swarm, because it just looks better. I do like the flying ones and stuff. That's actually the proper height of the ones the game works should come with, these ones. When it comes to shooting with Space Marines, the Space Marines are actually lower level. You cannot get line of sight on the four guys that are left because you cannot see them. So turn two, if you're lucky enough to get on an objective, especially without line of sight, your opponent is going to have such a hard time getting that off you. Because he will have to send over something that does like three wounds a turn just to kill the damn things. So, like, will he really send, like, an Imperial Knight to kill four Scarabs or a Demon Prince just to kill four Scarabs? Probably not. he will probably send over something weak and then see which of the weakest units will survive. Which is perfect, there's a chance of failure. If your opponent has a chance of failing to get us off you, it's good for you. So, stuff like that is a really good way to use Scarabs. Because if you can run into a, into a building, no line of sight, you're free next turn to run after a tank. Okay, so with, with Scarabs, your main goal is to get across the board and try and tie up your opponent's heavy weapons like the last cannons and stuff that's stuff that does a lot of damage if you're like me right i basically have almost no tanks as, well some of my armies have no tanks i don't really take many tanks these days because the amount of last cannons and stuff are out there is insane and with that robert, robert girly man that you can just re-roll everything like it, it's just it's just hard to keep my life. So, but if you scabs, you got a good chance because turn one, you can run up half up the board, you get your assault move, right? Let's say this, like that's the half move. So you turn, so you get like a 13 inch move, like that, right? And because they saw no profile, you actually can't see them. Even you can't see through the building, you can't see them, see, because they're actually lower than the wall itself. So it's actually quite easy to get these guys out of line of sight. So your main goal is, run up the board, try and get an objective, and if you can't get an objective, go for a building and hide in there. And next turn, do repeat and repeat until you do some damage. Okay, so once you're in the building, hiding away, your second turn, you want to go for land raiders, stuff that hits on sixes, something that's weak in combat. And if you're lucky enough, right, I would recommend you take one of these. If you're lucky enough, you might get a charge in a tank, you'll be able to space these out enough, like so. If you, haven't, if you haven't killed that many, if you're lucky enough, you can get a surround on him, like so. Use this to get you two inches to make sure it's all legal, so you can't say anything. That unit of six scarabs is legal, and I've also managed to get two behind him, so you actually cannot fall back. Okay, so that's very important, right? If you use scarabs, Try and get that surround on a tank. Because if you can pull it off, he can't get the guys out of there. Because he can't just like take the tank away and put the guys instead. So the guys will be stuck in the tank. And he can't shoot his weapons because he can't run away. Unless he can fly. 
So that's a really good way to use scabs there. Just use them like that. So if you use two units, I would I would recommend you send them in the same area, same direction. Because they're scarabs, they won't last long once you kill them. And that way then you're able to surround stuff and capture stuff and tie things up that need to be tied up. Okay. Okay then, so that's one good way to use scarabs. Let's go on to another way now. Ta da 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 the Satan! Yeah, he actually comes modeled with scabs in the base, which didn't make sense really. It's like, why would you put him in a unit of scabs when you get instantly killed instantly? Now, it's freaking cool because you can go like this. You can't shoot me. Like so. I've actually seen a lot of people use the Satan like this. They always seem to use scabs to shield them, which is quite cool because they have a lot of wounds. But don't forget the most important part with scabs, right? They are easy to kill. Your opponent can wipe them out easily, but it's not normally worth his points because they're so cheap. But if you got this guy across the field, like so, right, and he's on his own, so you got unit nine scabs on him. Your opponent will like, well, a six of armor. Most of my guns are minus one, so I just gotta put so many wounds on you, and you're dead. So he will absolutely obliterate one unit of scabs just to shoot this guy. Okay. So if you decide to use scabs for the Nightbringer, I'd highly recommend you use at least two units. Okay? And there's another reason why you use two units of nine. One is obviously to keep them alive. For the second reason, uh, another reason why you use two scabs is stuff like this. I know it shouldn't happen because he's a freaking god for crying out loud, you know? You should be looking up to Robert Gurley, man, and say, Oh, what? You're just a prime arc? A measly flesh and, bl flesh and blood prime arc? Can he just punch you in the face and kill you? But no. Okay. It's a good chance this Demon Prince, right, or whatever the hell you're fighting against, because there's some nuts stuff out there. It's a good chance you can take the Nightbringer out. The Swarm Lord kicks his butt every time. I fought him one on one in like Hood Wins, and I, I, I came close to killing the Swarm Lord once, but he always loses. So, say the Demon Prince, the Swarm Lord, you're like, oh well, Nightbringer's come in. Ha ha ha. Right, what you want to do now, right, you want to really, really annoy him. And let me show you how you can use scabs to really wind people up. Watch this now. Tennis move once. Don't charge. Watch this. Like so. Inch away. He can't get out. He has to assault those scabs to get out of there. And he'd be like, oh, he'll, he'll assault me now, those scabs. I'll wipe them out and I'll go kill the other scabs next turn. And I'll kill the Nightbringer. No, what you do? You send us a unit like this. Like, oh, look, you're stuck. And you have to charge me. By doing that, right, he has to waste a whole turn to get rid of these. Okay. Granted, he can shoot them off from elsewhere, but that's more firepower he's wasting. And then you just bring up the rest of the scabs and you go attack wherever you want. Granted, there's always a chance he can beat him in combat, but for the points, yeah, I'd rather just waste a whole your turn with your super death star, wherever the hell it is, you know? If that's what we man, right, there's no way in hell that I will even touch him. And there's no way a scab to take him out, honestly, trust me. So you can just surround him like that. I was like, oh, okay, you go over there, girly man. I'll make another wall, yeah? Just in case you um, kill those scabs, I'll just go, ha 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 ha. And move up the wall. So if he wipes all these out then with a shooting or in combat, this next turn, he still gets past the other scabs. And hopefully, you should be killing whatever you want to kill with that anyway. So that's another major cool way to use scabs is to trap people, not assault them. If you've got a good chance to kill them and assault, assault them, obviously, because stupid not to get your first hit. If you know, like, 100%, there's no way in hell those scabs can take out that guy. Just surround him. If he can't fly, he has to waste a whole turn and sort just to get past him. You know, and just forget now, some games end on turn 5 if you're really lucky. <laughs> or unlucky, depending if you win or not. So that's one game turn gone, so you don't have to fall before he starts. Let's say you don't get that close to him until turn 2, so it's turn 3 before you can do anything else. So you just wasted over half the game turns just trying to get in combat with something you can't get in combat with. So if you play little mind games like that, that really helps you win. Okay, so that's a good way to use scabs. Right, I had to show this guy off because he's awesome. All I can say to this guy is, your scarab farming days are over, my poor spider. Do not ever, I would, no, don't, 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 don't even bother doing a scarab farm. Okay, these are only 13 points each. So if you've got a unit of 9, you lose like 3 or 4. 
Is it really worth a mortal wound on your spider so puny anyway? The only defense you have against psychic powers? I would say no. I wouldn't say it's worth it. I wouldn't. For the points, for wounds for points, I wouldn't risk it. You can always command pointed, but I wouldn't. Like I said, you got five turns. Who the hell cares if one extra guy with three wounds is back on the board? I wouldn't use the scab farm ability at all. For two reasons. He's too expensive, and you can take a more wound. I know you can go command points, but it's command points. You can save those for D3 tackle objectives. You re-roll your morale test. Even at the end of the game turn, right? If you, if you win by a point and it's your turn to roll, it's like, oh, I need the game to end. Command point it. You're allowed to do that. It's like, bang, yes, at the end of the game, I won. Thanks to that one point they got left. Command points are very hard to get with necros because they're so, the units are so expensive. So you don't want to waste them with stupid things like that. You want to waste your command points damaging stuff to score points. And another bad thing if you use him for the scarab farms, you bring him out to cover, to go with the scarabs like you've been on the board. I'm healing this one, healing this one. He's not a character. What's, what's going to give up first blood? What's he, he's not even going to shoot the scarabs. He's like, oh, what? The spider's coming down the field? Easy target. No invents there. I know I'm shooting at. Oh no, most likely defense, first blood. No, don't. It's absolutely no reason to use a scalp farm. You can do it, obviously, if you go for a themed army, but it's just not viable. Which sucks, because I love the scalp farm. If he had the ability to make the scabs above the unit size, then yeah, obviously it's worth doing. Another way, if you wanted to, depending on what way you play, you could take him in units of three. And do you like the Nurgle players where they put the three little Nurglings on the base, they could infiltrate them in and just leave them the whole game? You can do it with these. Put an objective down somewhere that you know that your opponent can't see scabs. Like in the corner of that building there, you can't see them. So you can turn one and go like there, and right turn one and I'll run up the board with three scabs and go, ah, uh, uh, we've just been for this, but this is like actually planned to do it. It's not side effect, and just leave them the whole game. Can't be shot if they can't see them, they're so cheap, it doesn't matter. The neck, like I said, Necrons have lost their speed. You need speed to win games. You have to have speed. And you need sacrificial units because we don't got much firepower. No matter what, no matter any way you use scabs, right? No matter how you use them, you have to treat them as sacrificial units. It's like, I don't care if these die. Have fun. That's, that's their job. If they get wiped at turn one, don't worry about it. Okay, so I've been through a few of the tactics with the scabs. You've learned how to trap units, how to cost your opponent the game if you wrap on one of his tanks and he didn't see it come in. You can tie up his demon prince or actually assault in it. Obviously, if your wings will fly over you, so you have to assault it, but you know, probably Gurdiman can't do that. But, um, they can protect the Satan. Okay, I'll go into a bit more details how to protect the Satan on the Satan video. Best way to use these is buy yourself one of these and go for objectives. Because there's been a few games, right? I've lost, well, there's one game, I won, I had two models on the board. You had Robbie Gurdyman and like, yeah, over half his army left. I had two models and I won on points. <laughs> but um, what you can do with these, you can daisy chain them. If your units are six, you can get quite a bit of distance. You should be able to get two, two objectives, like so. And because it's so cheap, it really doesn't matter if he shoots you off them. You still, unless he kills all of them, you still own one at least. Okay. But the sweet number is six. Six seems to be the perfect balance between annoyance and survivability. Any more, they become a threat and your opponent will target them down. Any less, you will shoot them for first blood. So I would recommend giving the six a try. They seem to be the best number. So that's all the tips I have for you. And if you think I'm missing, let me know. But um, the main way to use them is go for tanks and objectives. Don't babysit these things, just send them out to die. I never expect you in combat with these. If you do, say, wow, they won something. Good scarab. Even tanks, they won't kill tanks because they just can't put enough wounds on the damn things. They're so weak. But it's the fact you could trap things. They faff bases. But you need to get one of these. That two-inch gap or the space beam one, you know, the little rubber thing. You can just... So you can't drive too far away. It's like, oh, yeah, I can. Stop lying. Okay, so thank you all for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.